thanks for the opportunity to meet you. Uh, I think about 10 years ago, 14 years ago, I started the journey to become an entrepreneur. And it came with its own challenges, and therefore I can understand uh, what many entrepreneurs go through. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about distribution. But I've captioned, I've captioned my talk. I've captioned it as how do you want to get your products to the customer? That's the most important thing. I'll just give you a brief background. Recently, I've been doing some work for a client who developed three fantastic products, but all of them ended their app in her warehouses. spent five years in radio advertising and working with Joy FM and one of the challenges I encountered was when customers had to pay for the advertising campaigns that they run. Many people believe that advertising campaigns is like a silver bullet. It sells all their products. So I do recall once a client came to me and said, I wanted to run, I mean, I would like to run, run an advertising campaign. And I said, well, are you sure you need to run an advertising campaign? He said, so yes. We run the campaign, we go for our money, and the guy tells us nobody acts. But now, critically, you begin to do <coughs> question. Did you have your products in the outlets? No. Very happy. I believe that some of you may have remembered very fantastic advertising campaign known as uh, Sugar Daddy. I don't know whether any of you saw Sugar that was repackaged. Yeah. You understand? Packaged and branded. One of the things I did was walk into the shop and there was no Sugar Daddy on the shelves. Advertising done, spent, and it's not cheap. Yet the product was not available. Somebody put it this way. I read your advert in the newspaper. I saw it on TV. I heard it on radio. I saw it on the billboard. When I got to the shop, I didn't see you, so I bought your competitor's product. That's what distribution is about. It means that <coughs> you can do all those things without having the right distribution. You know, make you may help me. Right. So to start. This is what I just want to take you through. I mean, basically, you start your business, you decide how to go to the market. Of course, you define what to sell. We all know what we want to sell. Then we want to know who to sell to. Now, the big challenge, and that's why I'm here today, is how to sell your products. How to make sure that your product is available. So this session, I'm going to introduce you to this, and then I'll leave the rest for a Q&A session. You can ask questions and I'll answer them so that we can make it more interactive. So I'm just going to run through it. You know, distribution, when a lot of people tell you about marketing, they'll tell you the four Ps, that you have your product, you have your price, you have your promotion, and therefore, that's what they call place distribution. That's part of the marketing mix. But I typically say that once you define it as place, it, it becomes very restrictive, it becomes very narrow, it affects your, your, your ability to think outside the box. So I see that as a concept of availability. Now think about it. It's just a concept of availability. It doesn't matter how you get the product to your customer. In other words, don't see it as moving your product from point A to point B as distribution. Every method that you can make your products reach a potential customer is a distribution platform. So the concept is more of availability, the concept of availability. And that ties into what I call the four R's. In other words, it must be available at the right, you must have the right product, available at the right place, at the right time, and at the right price. Is that understood? 
now, your choice of a distribution outlet can make you uncompetitive. For all you know, your product is not meant to be expensive, but you decide to choose a distribution outlet that makes it expensive. The other thing about distribution, which I say is the concept of availability henceforth, is that it can give you competitive advantage. Obviously, what I indicated from the beginning, I saw your ad, but when I got to the shop, you went in there and bought your, comp your competition. It's a typical example of what happens when you don't do distribution. Exactly. So let's let's look at how I look at it. How? So quickly, let's look at it. Now you have your products. So as entrepreneurs, you have your products. Now your challenge is what channel you are going to use to reach your potential customers. Your products may be a virtual product or intangible. How many people are involved in the service industry here? Which industry are you in? Uh, IT. IT, okay. So you are virtual. Yeah. You are intangible. Okay. Who else is in the uh, tangible, intangible, virtual? What are you in? Then we have the physical. How many of us? I guess the rest of us are physical products. Mm -hmm. Right? Physical. Okay. So, those are the products. Now you are left with two options. How, what kind of channel you use? There are two channels available. And this is where my discussion will be extensive. Direct or indirect. Now, I want to indicate that whether you use a direct or indirect approach, depends on a particular business. There are businesses who decide that we will use the direct approach and are profitable. And there are businesses who decide that we will use the indirect approach and are profitable. Exactly. But there are pros <coughs> and cons, and you need to determine which one is good for you. Now, when I talk about direct, in other words, like the software company, you may have to have a sales team who will go out there to sell. They will go out to prospect for customers and sell directly. That's a typical example. I don't know whether your software can be sold over the internet. Can it be sold over the internet? No, no. Not yet. So you cannot do a direct sales there. Those of you who are selling physical products, an example, what are you selling? What are you? I work with seven. Oh, you work with seven? Yes. Mattresses. Okay, mattresses. Okay, so mattresses, you can sell directly, right, to consumers, or you can decide to use an indirect sales. Is that understood? So the direct one is that you have control over the people who are going to sell. So you have a sales force. If you have a retail outlet which belongs to you, for instance, you have a restaurant and somebody wants it, that's a direct channel. Or if you have your own outlet through which you sell all your produce, that is a direct channel for you. However, if you decide that you want to place some of your products through shell shops, you want to place them through uh, the neighborhood shops in a uh, our towns, then it becomes indirect because you may decide to use a distributor or not. Is that understood? So the direct is where you have control. Now the indirect is that you seek control of the distribution of your product to a third party, i.e. a wholesaler, an agent, or a distributor. Is that understood? So that becomes a challenge. And now you have to take a decision as to do that. Now, I can give you two companies, case studies. 
Let's take usually the best practice is what I use, and then I'll bring it down to very small companies. If you take the big brand companies, what I mean by big brand companies for consumer products, you take the Unilevers, you take the Nestle's, you take the PZs, etc. They do primarily indirect channels. This is where they appoint distributors, give them territories to work from, and then hold them accountable. So they are saying a crowd will be divided into three parts. Okay, you take this portion, you take this portion. At the end of each year, we expect you to have sold goods worth so much. And then they have the controls. How do you do that? On the contrary, you have another company that is also in consumer products, which has decided that they will do a direct model. In other words, they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, in fact, thousands of delivery vehicles. In fact, they convert motorbikes, eh, uh, uh, Kia, uh, Picantos, uh, what else? What else have I seen? The scooters, no, because for them, the direct approach, in their opinion, gives them absolute control. It's not dependent on any other person's delivery. It's control. So they know uh, the PK sellers, they, are, they sell by the side of the road, small, small stores. So how do you make sure that they get their products? The only way you make sure they get their products is to use motorbikes. So they deliver through motorbikes direct. Some companies, you have to go to a distributor to buy. Now, for indirect, usually there are people who have, who have powerful brands, who are well established, who have done this for a long time want their business. However, for new and upcoming businesses, you cannot leave your business in the hands of an indirect, through an indirect distribution. You may be able to do that only on one condition. The condition should be that it's not exclusive. Do you understand me? It's not exclusive. Because if it becomes exclusive, that person may not work hard. That person may just sit down and sell maybe a thousand and think it's all right. But you have to give the person competition. Tell the person, yes, I'm giving you the first market mover advantage by appointing you one of my distributors first. And that doesn't mean I can't appoint for you next who is next door. Is that understood? So that is it. But in most cases, the challenge is you need to be in control until such a time that you begin to expand. And usually, indirect uh, channel is when you have grown and grown, and now you want to come. You need to focus on your your core business, and you want other people to take care of that. So that is the. Uh, Two there are two differences that I can recommend here. So, in conclusion, and then you will ask as many questions as can and will discuss. You have your products, whether it's virtual or physical, you have two options. Take control of the distribution yourself or sell through agents, wholesalers.
let's take an example. Uh, let's say a software company. So we're talking about industry se sectors. So let's yes. Just, what I mean, I so it's the industry sector. Yes, industry sectors, it, it, does, it, it depends on what you want to achieve and who you want to sell to. And that's what's happened. That's why you need to, we need to go back to my go to market strategy. Because the person you will be selling to actually influences the way you distribute it. So I'll give you a typical example. If you are doing, uh, for instance, even if it's all physical products and you are selling to consumers, where somebody will walk into the shop to buy, you want to sell through a distributor, which will eventually filter into the retail outlets, and then you and me will go and buy. At the same time, that company may want to be selling to chefs in a hotel. That company may be want to be selling to uh, caterers in uh, uh, schools. You don't sell through a distributor. So you define it as a, a key account. In that case, you have a team that specifies, I mean, focuses on that. Is that clear? So um, your, it's, it's not industry specific. For instance, even if you take an intangible product, like uh, software, you have a situation where the software companies have agents. Now, they have different products. They may have products that are targeted at individuals. You need to buy, you walk to the retail outlet to go and buy from the shop. But if it is for enterprise solution, you now have to develop what they call key account executives. These are top level, let's say, salespeople whose expertise is helping the companies deal with use their products, and then customize it to their needs. Exactly. So it's, it, it hasn't got much to do with uh, the kind of industry in which you are. It, it's, it works across industry. But you need to look at the peculiarity of your, your, your business. Who do you want to be selling to? And that is what will define how you structure your business. For instance, you may decide that your product has to be sold to uh, individuals. So some people go from home, house to house. You need a different category of sales, direct sales people who will go there. The same time, the same product might be pitched to the corporate environment. Then at that point, you need a different caliber of persons to be able to engage the corporates on a one-on-one -on -one situation, you see. So it's, it's driven actually by whom do you want to sell to? And that is the beginning. If you don't do that, then you, you'll be trying hard and not achieving what you want to achieve. So this is key. We all know what we want to sell, what we are selling, but then this is very, very important. Whom do you want to sell to? Any other questions? Yes. yes. To what extent does internet come into play in terms of indirect distribution? Yes. For well, people? internet. Yes, that's a good question. Yes, internet can be direct. You can sell your products. Use the internet as a direct distribution channel. That's through your own internet platform. At the same time, you can use your another internet as an indirect. In other words, you use somebody else's platform to distribute your product. You know there are some platforms that are aggregators. You know, you can, you can put your products and you pay them a commission for anybody who buys through their website. Do you understand me? So then that becomes an indirect sales channel. That's why I started by saying, if you define distribution as the concept of availability, 
it doesn't restrict you. Brick and mortar doesn't, it's not the only solution. You can think about so many things. I'll give you a typical example. Somebody, a, a salesperson just came out of something. He used to, he sold uh, home appliances, televisions, uh, cookers, and all those things. Now, the traditional place of buying those things is in a class center, Oprah Square, right? That's where a category of people, they're in the showrooms. I mean, they're fiercely competitive. You know what this guy did? He was in Tampa here as a sales rep for a particular company. He decided to start talking to furniture factories to add it to Furniture manufacturers are responsible for going to build kitchen cabinets in people's homes. Furniture manufacturers build, uh, how do you call it, uh, TV stands, uh, furniture, etc. Now, that furniture guy has now, next to his shop, he has a home appliance outlet. Is that understood? So, it's about availability. Mm -hmm. The people I want to reach come to your outlet. And therefore, why don't I sell through them? Another example, and that is for banking products. I you know of uh, Fidelity, Smart, something. Mm -hmm. Smart. That's a typical example. If Fidelity had thought about defined distribution as their branch outlets alone, there are ATM machines alone. That would have restricted their ability to reach me. But looking at it from the point of view of the concept of availability and asking the question, where else can I get my products available? And which complements other people's products? That is it. So for Startups, we need to look at such opportunities, you know, because we cannot compete head on with well established people. We need to be very clever about it. Um, about distribution, another case study. Who has read uh, Africa Rising? The book Africa Rising. There's this guy who instantly converted a trend in is it Tunisia or Nigeria? I want to be sure about one of those countries. Now, it's cultural that the neighborhood shop gives credit for people. So you go, uh, I've come back, book it today, I'll take it. And then they book them. That's how much you've had for them. At the end of the month, when they get the they pay. Yeah. And that's what almost all the shops did, neighborhood shops. This guy walked in and saw the trend and decided that, I think he was a banker, and decided that, well, we can make ourselves available here. We can sell our products available. So they tied in with this owners of the shops. So now when the person comes, instead of the book, they, they give them a form to fill. As a bank account. So instantly, they have more than a thousand outlets. So now, when the people come, they have a debit card. You understand? That's how he grew the, his, his business. So that's how you have to look at the concept of distribution. Most importantly, see it as the concept of availability. So, two things. Yes. In other words, you're saying, want to sell a product, you need to be able to sit down and think about unique ways, probably which is not a, which has not been done before. And think about unique ways in which you can sell a product. Then secondly, I want to ask, um, like you said, you are talking about startups. If you are you are a startup, let's say you want to do soap and detergents. Yes. Um, let's say your customers are individuals. Yes. Okay. Um, how do you do? Let's say individuals catalog around Africa. 
have some at Lakoni, some at uh, all around. Yes. How can you manage that? How can you manage that? Let me take the, that distribution that you need to have control over that. You need a distribution value. Yes. And you need to be on time and deliver to them directly. In other words, you own the distribution process. You, you, you have control over your processes. Because if you give that to somebody else to do for you, that person may be handling other products. Yeah. Some of those products will be giving them more margins than your products. Mm -hmm. They are not going to give it the necessary attention that it deserves. And to even uh, emphasize that point, if you had a sales team to sell your products, for instance, you have product A, product B, product C. Even in that situation, you'll find salespeople gravitating towards products that are easy sales with low margins than the products which are not, which has high margins but difficult to sell. They'll be selling the, the easy product. These are people who work with you and you're giving them products to go and sell. How much more uh, a so-called agent who is not being held accountable. And you don't have the clout like uh, some of these big companies to hold them accountable. You don't have, you can't employ a regional manager who will be attached to them to make sure that all the deliverables are met. You can't do that. So if it is that one van, optimize the van and put in tracking systems that can hold whoever is doing those distribution accountable. That is, that is it. Having said that, you have to think of what we call non-traditional distribution outlets. And it's, it's always evolving. Until recently, there was no, there was nothing like neighborhood shop. When companies were defining distribution outlets, retail outlets. There was nothing like neighborhood shops. But now you find neighborhood shops, which has its own characteristics. So you'll find that even if you put some products in neighborhood store, it won't move. Because neighborhood shops <coughs> are, are for refills. Do you understand? Yeah. For refills. So I get to, oh, we've run out of this. Well, some products That's will the main place to do your shopping. Exactly. So there, there's the need to understand your product. There's the need to understand which channel will be the right fit for your product. Otherwise, it will be an exercise in futility. Somebody else will be selling and you will not be selling. Being paid. Is that what you, what's happening? 
right? So you have to take a decision. Of course, do you want cash or you want debt? You, you want it. But the truth of the matter is that, they, and you said, rightly said that, well, they would have sold the product, but wouldn't have paid you. So it is not an issue of the product not moving. It is an issue of uh, its behavior. The, yes, its behavior. And they do it all the time. They do it all the time. Uh, I don't know how many of you have spent time in Macron. They will do it inside. They will turn your products around, sell and use the money to go and buy <laughs> other products. So you have to take it. Cash is king. So if the person says, okay, I can afford only five cartons, sell the five cartons and collect your cash. Then the person say, give me 50 cartons and give it to me on credit. Cash. And it's not, we are not the only well established companies are suffering, are bleeding back. So it's, it's a policy you need to take right from the word go. Yes, I have a product to sell. I need your outlet to sell this product. But my policy is that we don't give credit. Whichever quantity you want to buy, buy and sell. When they finish, they'll call you. But because they owe you, they will avoid you. Is that not what happens? saying that one aspect of distributorship, I mean if you want to distribute your products, is to have clear cut uh, rules and regulation about how you want to sell. We agree, but you need them. Yeah, so yeah. Isn't that difficult to enforce yes. when you're a new marketer? Yes, yes. yes. I, I understand. Yeah. So, uh, you, are, you are new marketer. Yes. I understand. Yes. You don't have much choices. So. Well, you see, you, you do have in every marketing environment, you do have traders who are innovators. The innovators are people who can see a product and see the potential in it. They are prepared to risk and invest in those products to sell. There are those who will just sit on the fence until it's doing well before they will come. It's a tough job, but you see, how much capital do you have? 